I, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you, Congressman, is because you're one of the only lawmakers who is willing to say out loud that individual members of Congress should not be trading stock in the American. Being a public policymaker and making policy decisions. And for the love of God, you've been there for 40 years. If you want to go trade stocks, retire. No question. And nobody's talking about seizing their assets. They're just saying that while you serve, this is what you're talking about, while you serve as a lawmaker, that you shouldn't have uh, some sort of detailed interest in the companies that uh, stand to benefit from access to you. So it's like, you know, Nancy Pelosi. Just her husband just uh, bought millions of dollars in call options for Google with, that are that have a strike date of September of this year. The expectation is that Google's going to rise meaningfully by September of this year. That's the bet that they made. Well, that sure tells us a lot about the chances that Nancy Pelosi would ever have a hand in regulating Google and its excesses. And that's a, that's a really good point. And it's a point that I've been trying to make to my colleagues to understand, look, again, I'm not, in fact, if people want to set like a threshold, like below a certain amount of, of investments for people who come in and, and they want to maintain, they can't afford a blind trust advisor. I mean, I get that. These are things we ought to think through. Uh, but at the end of the day, Nancy Pelosi can afford whatever financial advisor she wants. She has. She doesn't need to have her hand and her husband doesn't need to have her hand in making decisions that benefit them financially right. while making decisions about the policy interests of the United States of America. I don't think that's a hard call. Now, a lot of Americans, of course, agree with you on this. Seventy six percent of voters think members of Congress have an unfair advantage in trading stocks. This was a poll that was conducted this week by the conservative group Convention of States Action. Just five percent of voters approve of members of Congress trading stocks. So this this is a very um, clear cut uh, uh, opinion in the American public uh, that doesn't really have a partisan break. And this is people. This is one of the few areas where people broadly agree. And now I see this well, morning. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Oh, I was just saying. But and if you look at the the members of Congress that have performed particularly well in beating the S and P and 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 how they perform against the market, it's bipartisan, right? This is not a partisan issue, and it shouldn't be. Neither is you know limiting spending and stopping uh, the funding of federal uh, tyrannical bureaucrats a partisan issue and securing the border but in this case this one is particularly as you point out nonpartisan yes absolutely no i've i've seen that list uh, there's a lot of familiar names there people who are are outperforming the S&P 500 uh, pretty dramatically and they are sitting lawmakers um, <clears throat> then we also have Kevin McCarthy the republican leader according to punchball news this morning he is considering a ban on lawmakers holding and trading stocks should he become Speaker of the House, if Republicans take back 
the majority this November. They say planning is in its early stages. Have you been in touch with Kevin McCarthy about this planning, and do you have any sense of what it looks like? Well, not specifically. Uh, I've talked to his staff all the time about a lot of different issues. He and I are working together to fight the proxy voting, uh, you know, travesty that is occurring in the House of Representatives. Ninety-three members voted to establish quorum yesterday by proxy. I'm not making that up. Different call. Happy to call in on a different topic. Sorry, but just to this, be clear so people uh, understand, that means they weren't even at the Congress. They were, yeah. they were home in their home district voting? They voted present by proxy from either their home district or wherever they are. Ninety-three members of the United States Congress tried to establish quorum. Is saying that they're present by proxy. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, a lie. we talk about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is a lie. And so, um, but, you know, the leader, I've heard uh, what he wants to do. I've talked a little bit of the staff. Uh, we're certainly happy to work with him, look forward to working with him. And, again, there are different flavors of what this can look like. I, I'm open to that. Abigail and I took an approach and outlined what we thought was a good model to start. And let's also restore the House of Representatives to a debating society. Let's actually put the bill on the floor, and let's offer 5, 10, 15, 20 amendments. Let's have people vote on it. Uh, we can make a choice. Maybe we only apply it to leadership and committee chairs. Maybe we apply it to everybody. Maybe we uh, limit and say, well, it'll apply for all prospective transactions, but you can maintain your existing portfolio as long as it's public and transparent. I don't know. I just made everything I just set up. My point is, let's have a debate on the floor of the House, and let's actually focus on eliminating the corruption that, or the perception of corruption that this causes. Yeah, I mean, we expect executive-level cabinet officials to divest from interests that conflict with what they regulate, and, and yet here we have... You know, sitting members of Congress who, of course, exert so much power uh, and, and in terms of, you know, what they decide to focus on, uh, and who have, you know, are trading in these individual stocks with these with these major companies who some of which, including I talk about at Google, some of these big tech companies have wrought so much damage on the country by virtue of the censorship that they've exercised over what allowable debate and knowledge is allowed to be expressed out there. You know, the chances of, of Congress ever getting its arms around that problem really go down if everyone has a little piece of Google in their portfolio. In fact, one of the concerns I have, Chip Roy, as much as I, I appreciate your effort to get at this, is even if you had members of Congress have their investments in a blind trust, which, you know, the, they'll have some somebody invest in some mutual fund or something. I mean, think about the, the dominance of tech stocks in our market. E even then, if I had a blind trust, I would kind of assume that my portfolio was heavily weighted towards so many of these big tech companies, don't you think? Well, I think it's a good point, and I'd actually like to sidebar on this and say not just big tech, which we all have our big concerns with, yeah. but big healthcare, right? I mean, insurance, pharma, uh, the hospital corporations. I mean, uh, let's talk about all the stuff going on with the vaccine mandates and how many need to be mandated and how much money Pfizer is making on that and how much money insurance companies have made since Obamacare was passed. Very, very specific public policy choice with insurance companies in the room, and they've made hundreds of millions of dollars uh, through corporate cronyism. Uh. That's a perfect example. And to your point, yeah, that's still a concern. That's, and we put index you know, funds in there as well. Of course, we all benefit and the market goes up. I put that in the pot of things to say, yeah, but we all benefit when the overall economy is strong and the overall performance is going up. But as long as you're blind and you're not trading on specific stocks, I think you're in a good position. And if it's, as long as someone else is making those choices, we're all for a strong economy where companies are making profits and making money. We just want to avoid that corporate cronyism angles. 